who you are and what have you accomplished uh, before coming on Taboo? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I'll try to keep the, the long story short and, and uh, you know, make it concise. So, you know, before I, I got involved with Taboo and the crypto industry, uh, you know, I was a pre-medical student here in Canada. I live in Vancouver, BC. Um, <clears throat> so I went to the University of British Columbia. It's the most recognized university uh, in our province. Um, and, you know, I, I did a dual major science degree in the art of science. So it was uh, physiology and neuroscience. I did a combined major there. Uh, I also did uh, a lot of research as well at the Brain Research Center uh, at that university. I wrote a thesis paper uh, that got published. I did a lot of leadership work uh, as well as, um, uh, you know, you know, besides all of that as well, you know, I was just really, you know, the prototypical pre-med student. I didn't, I just wanted to get into medical school. That was my dream and my vision at the time. And this is what I want to share with everyone uh, before I even move forward. Um, you know, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the way life works, it doesn't work in a straight line or trajectory. You know, we all have goals and we have dreams and we, as long as we're focused on some type of vision and we have a plan, we build experience, right? So when I share this story, you'll see that all the experience that I developed primed me to be working on Taboo. So as I move forward now, so I actually ended up getting accepted into medical school, uh, but then I decided to decline it. And, you know, at the time, people thought I was crazy. But my mindset and my mentality was I do not want to work hard now to keep working harder later. I'm a firm believer in the fact that, that you know, from the moment we were born, right, society has conditions that they set on to us on when we should retire and the way that we should live and all of that. And I don't want, I did not want to be average. I did not want to follow the norm. I said, if I work hard now, I want to have an opportunity to work less later. And the way that I'm going to do that is by generating some type of business and earning passive income. So I decided, okay, let me try to delve into business. So, uh, you know, I wrote some entrance exams. I got accepted into a master's of business management program at the university. And again, I declined it. And you might be saying, well, well, why did you do that? It's because I understood that I would end up working an entry-level management position, having my value and my worth dictated in the form of a paycheck and having individuals, you know, above me that I'm making rich, you know? So I said, I don't know if I want to do this. I want to go my own way. So I spearheaded my own wealth management business. I ran it for over five years uh, I, with successful and multiple accolades as well. Uh, so, you know, and I, I also did a, extensive amounts of public speaking and professional public speaking at wide forums and events. You know, some some of them had close to five, 6,000 people at certain events as well, which included inspirational and motivational speaking too. But of course, this is going to hit close to home for everybody. You know, uh, you know, eventually got to a point where we all dealt with uh, the COVID virus. And, you know, I was fortunate in that uh, when COVID hit and we were in isolation, I was able to detach from my lifestyle that I was so accustomed and conditioned to and take a hard look at how I was living. And I said, uh, you know, I need to make a change. I, I had this mentality that, that I had to sacrifice now in order to live later and live, you know, happy later. And I realized, no, 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 I can design my dream lifestyle today. Wherever stage in life I'm at, I can do it today. So I decided to delve into the world of crypto. And I was just an active investor like all of you. You know, I remember the first three weeks I watched so many YouTube videos. I, I, I learned from people I knew. See, at the end of the day, you know, it's okay to learn from others as long as you're learning from the right people. And, and so I made sure to get mentored as much as possible in, in, in various areas of cryptocurrency. Uh, but here's the main point of all of this. When I got involved in crypto and I moved all my money from the stock markets, you know, I have nothing against people investing in the stock markets. It's more slow moving. You know, sometimes I make a joke, the stock markets is like the stock markets, Crypto is more volatile and risky, but you have a higher potential for gain and to reach financial independence and freedom. So I moved my funds over. I started investing as an active investor, but I noticed a major flaw in the crypto industry. 99% of development teams do not know how to actually develop a crypto project. And I started to become frustrated. I said, how can you have a billion dollar idea 
and I see where it can go, but you're failing at areas like community management, like public relations, like marketing, people management, and all of that. And so I decided to start consulting for crypto projects by just giving suggestions with nothing in return. I'm like, you know what? If I own an investment, I'm going to take charge of this investment and I'm going to offer the knowledge that I have from my previous experiences in the stock markets and in business. And I'm just going to try to self-preserve my own money and to grow it because I wanted to have more control over my money. That is the key point, everybody. I wanted more control over my money. So turns out development teams are saying, hey, you have great ideas. We never thought about it this way. We'd like you to join our core team. So I started to join various core teams and I was able to gain so much experience in a very little, small amount of time in every aspect of the crypto project. I was dealing with tech, I was dealing with marketing, I was dealing with PR, I was dealing with, with team management, operations, all of it, you name it, right? And I was able to get immersed fully into the operations of crypto companies, right? And the very last project that I was on, you know, I single-handedly grew it to hundreds of millions of market cap uh, as well. And and then, you know, I always had this idea in my mind that, you know, sex sells, uh, the, old, the adult entertainment space uh, is a lucrative one as well. So you add NFTs with sex and fantasy uh, and, and, you know, tokenizing, you know, maybe perhaps, you know, non safer work content and pornography, if you want to call it, I'll explain in a moment about taboo, it is not a porn token. So, uh, you know, I said, you know, there's an opportunity there. So, so I was about to launch my own adult entertainment project. And I was fortunate enough to meet James, who's the CMO slash COO as well. The titles don't mean anything. We're 50 50 partners on this. And, you know, we really work on this together. So, um, you know, and I and I said, I told him, I said, listen, like, if this is what you want to do as well, uh, we had discussions, you know, Taboo was already, you know, launched at the time. And, um, and, you know, he was looking to bring in a new new member of, of the team there. I said, either we work together, or I'm gonna, you're going to become my direct competition. So lo and behold, we ended up working together. And here we are now. So, so that's a bit of the background about myself and how I transitioned into cryptocurrency. So so that's amazing. You, that's that's it. amazing. That's an amazing story. All right. So Madrid, I, I want to ask you something. How did you go around coming to the, uh, let's say, uh, coming down to this token? So you have have all these experience in different companies and different tokens, right? So how did it come? How did it lead to taboo? How did it lead to this adult industry? Like you could have done a smart contract, you could have done I don't know a yield farm, you could have done savings, you could have done a store of value, but you chose this industry. Why? You mean in the adult entertainment industry, correct? Is exactly. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, for you know a few reasons. I mean, you know, sometimes we have to go through you know traumatic events in our lives to to recognize sometimes the value and the potential of, of, of some area of an industry too. You know, there was a time, I'm not going to mention the token's name, where, you know, I had invested about $30,000 into it. I had pulled out of it fairly early. And within a month, I would have had about 5 million US dollars in that project. Uh, this was earlier this year. So, so that really stung. But that was sort of the starting point of where I said, there must be something to this. Now, what happened was I was always super bullish on NFTs and I understood that NFTs are here to stay for a wide range of reasons. I mean, we know non-fungible tokens, uh, you know, it, it helps with copyright infringement issues. You can have the sole owner and you know who the owner is. You know, there's the scarcity and rarity aspect of an NFT that is really exciting around it. So, you know, I, I just, I saw an opportunity and you see, this is what it's all about. It's never where the puck is. It's where the puck is going. And it takes someone understanding what is trending and hot in the crypto space to see that opportunity. So I saw an imminent wave happening in the adult space and I simply did, just wanted to be a part of it. Does that make sense? Like I just wanted to be a part of it and be a pioneer at the forefront of it. So, so that's, really what led to my idea of getting involved in this space 
but I also wanted more autonomy and control because with my previous projects, I was joining them at a later point in time for some, and I was there to fix their problems. Does that make sense? So I wanted to build my own project and feel that I owned it, and I felt confident enough to get started, but I was fortunate enough to meet James where we would develop this business partnership together where he started some of the early work that I knew would take me quite a long time so I just came in it's like you know it's like having a blueprint on a home the blueprint is just starting it's not completed yet right on on how to build the home I came in and I took whatever was there at the start and I expanded on it does that make sense so that's what happened that's a that's a great backstory that is a great backstory now uh Magic. Uh, when you when you are creating this uh, this token uh, called Taboo, uh, I I recently seen that it's been price surging a lot. So you reached uh, in, in these couple of days and weeks, uh, I, I believe it's in the last two weeks that you reached from a twenty million market cap to just over uh, I believe seventy million. Uh, and if I'm not if I'm uh, saying this correctly, you're currently ranked one in terms of the adult industry tokens. Uh, so, so you have the number one token in, in that category. Yes, 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 yes. I believe, I believe we're number one or number two right now. It's one or the other, but, but yeah, we're, we're right up there. We may, we may be number one already. Excellent. So, so what, what do you plan? Where do you think these NFTs are, are taking you? Talk, talk to me more about Taboo. Where, where do you, what are you going to do with this token? Where are you going to take it? Where is things going to go? And of course, where do you see the NFT industry going? Do you do you feel like because I've been reading uh, a bit about your project, and is that you somehow want to tokenize um, this adult industry into the NFT platforms? Uh, things like uh, I believe is Taboo Mansions or, or something like that. If you just a little bit elaborate on that a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So you know, I'll give you a bit of an ex- of an understanding for everybody on the call uh, around around what taboo is. So a taboo is an adult entertainment media and streaming NFT platform. Now I say media because we don't just stop at NFTs, right? However, what differentiates us from the rest of the market is while we are in adult entertainment, we are not a porn token. So porn is not our flagship product from day one. We had our sights set on building a powerful, sustainable, strong, and long-lasting brand. This is why we chose the name Taboo in the first place, because Taboo is a highly marketable name. Think Google SEOs and all those types of search bar searches as well. And if you look at the competition, well, I'll get into that in a moment. There is no competition since we're forming our own niche here. Uh, You know, some of the names are so ridiculous I would be embarrassed to be sitting at a dinner table sharing with my family and friends that I work on a project like this or I own a project like this, right? So we wanted to have and build a positive and strong brand from the beginning. It started with the name that's extremely marketable and it's and it then also moves on to how our business model operates. So, you know, when with Taboo itself as an ov- overarching theme, we are trying to become the next playboy of blockchain. That is what we are doing. That is a big statement. That is a big statement. Let's go. (laughs) And I would characterize taboo into three elements. One, quality. So we focus and specially curate the highest quality supermodels in the industry. You can see that with our model partners, Chloe Terry, look her up on Twitter and on Instagram. She is an internationally recognized Playmate model, three-time Playmate of the Year, right? She's our primary brand ambassador. We have individuals like Jenny Summers, Brie TSC. You know, we have uh, CJ Sparks, Holly Barker, right? So we actually are curating and bringing on the highest quality supermodels, and we will never, ever reduce on quality when it comes to this because, again, Playboy they have their own standards of participation too. So, so we have the quality, but we also have the exclusivity. See, this is what separates taboo from the masses. When we look at our marketplace and you can read more about it 
in, in our white paper, we've developed a unique tiering system where you have to have certain requirements to get access to further benefits and exclusive content. So I want you all to think about why we strategized it in this way. The adult entertainment industry is a very harsh one in the sense that people judge and it, you know, it becomes hard sometimes to market depending on how your token looks, because some of these projects, literally, they are, they are, they, they, they have no filter in terms of how they're branding themselves. Right. So it becomes, you know, harder to list on major exchanges and all of that because of the nature of the space, but we're designing our marketplace in a way where there are multiple tiers and depending on how much taboo you hold you will start to get access to more exclusive content so it'll start from safer work type content so this is the type of content where to the naked eye for a prospective investor that comes onto our marketplace they're seeing a very clean classy elegant marketplace that doesn't look like a porn token because we are not one so that is already a differentiator in and of itself. But as you move forward, based on how much taboo you own, you will get to unlock higher tiers and get access to more exclusive content from these models, from other types of imaging that we have as well, right? And eventually the highest tier for the premium holders, we will have a triple X rated section as well. And that's where you can talk, okay, the pornography aspect of this can be there. Does that make sense? So we have a unique tiering system in place, and this is really, really exciting for us. Uh, and the last thing that I would say is, you know, ex uh, innovation. So from day one, we said we want to be the number one adult entertainment token in the entire crypto space. So we have to set the bar and our sights high. From the very beginning, we said we're going to list on a tier one exchange. We want it to go straight to Binance, straight to Kuko. We want to go straight to all these exchanges. Then we found out, well, okay, wait, we have to have our community grow. You know, we need to make sure that we get on a tier two exchange first. That's why we're now on three exchanges already. It's all just setting us up and gearing, gearing us up for the next step up. And I want to share some amazing news with all of you. As of two days ago, we have gotten approval to be listed on a major top 10 exchange. That, that's fantastic, man. That's congratulations on that. Congratulations Moment of silence on that. there for everybody. <laughs> that is a congratulation. There's even, there's even a second major exchange, and these are some of the biggest exchanges in all of the crypto space. Has already also is already wanting to list us as well, but we're going to go with this one first strategically, and we're lining this next one up, uh, hopefully for November as well. So, so yeah. So, would, so in order for us to be the, if we want to be the best then we need to be very selective on the kind of partners we choose, the kind of team members we bring on, and all of that. Because if we have to be number one, we need to have our standards of excellence top notch, and our vision has to be matched with our work ethic. So this is why we work so hard day in and day out to try to prove to all of you that we are going to become number one. But what we did as well is we said, you know, we can go out there and we can build a marketplace for 20, 30,000 US dollars, get it going very quickly. All the other competition did it. You know why? Because they have a scarcity mindset. They do it because they are afraid that if they don't, they won't have first mover's, mover's advantage. They won't be able to grow quickly enough. They're operating out of fear. We have been out for four months and our marketplace isn't out yet. And it will be out in a few weeks from now, but I am not afraid to delay it, to make sure that we do it right the first time and make sure that this launch is the best launch ever. And so we decided, what are we going to do? We're going to go with the best development team that money can buy. So we went with the Engine Coin Marketplace Development Team. You've, you've all heard of Engine Coin. We went with the development team that built out that platform called PowerSoft. And they're working on our marketplace right now. We're in the final stages of the marketplace. We have large scale marketing efforts being lined up. Uh, you know, we're going to be blasted everywhere, by the way. That everywhere, sounds insane. That right? sounds insane. And, and we are launching this marketplace with a million dollars worth of NFT content. So you can imagine there's a lot of preparation that has to happen on our end. So, you know, it's neither here nor there for me. You look at projects like Cardano, they didn't have a working product for six years. It is not in my interest to launch quickly and rush it because look at our market cap now. We're almost at 60 million. We could get to 500 million 
in the next few weeks. It's actually now a possibility, right? So I want to make sure that we got the best development team that money can buy. But the key point of, is this that makes us different. The simplicity of our user interface and user experience. Simplicity is the name of the game. You need to all remember 99.9% of people don't have a clue on how to buy a crypto, own it, and God forbid, even being able to own the one that, that you want them to own. So we have made our marketplace so simple to use that a non-crypto centric investor now, I haven't seen a single project that does this, can come on within milliseconds, create their own MetaMask wallet with their own private key. We have a swap feature in place with all the top cryptos that you can swap, BNB, Ethereum, you name it, into Taboo. So they not only get to have a wallet, they are able to know how to own Taboo. They can swap into Taboo and they can buy and trade NFTs with it on the marketplace. You know, this is a revolutionary marketplace on the innovation side. So again, quality, exclusivity, innovation. And this is just version one. See, we have three phases to our marketplace. And in the next phases, there are a lot of DeFi protocols coming up. I mean, even in this phase alone, which on our first version launch, we're going to have staking. We're going to have yield farming, right? We're going to have a lot of these DeFi protocols in place. You can buy and sell NFTs. The tiering system, it's all going to be one tier for now because this is a minimally viable product launch. And why do I say this? I say this so I can manage all of your expectations. See, even though there's three phases of our marketplace and even though eventually just so you're all aware of some of the features that are going to be on this, it is just it's so, totally insane. I mean, I mean, we're going to have streaming services, video type NFTs. We're going to have the ability for people to stake onto individual model profiles. We're going to have the ability for people to, to do virtual reality type content creation, virtual reality. That, that's what's that's coming. It's coming to us. And because I talk about innovation, see, I'm keeping myself researched all the time on the technology in front of us. There is a type of NFT called immutable NFTs that the Ethereum chain just launched. I told our development team, next phase, make sure that we integrate it. And they're like, sounds good. That's what happens when you get the best development team the money can buy. Right? They'll do it. And they know that, how to that do it. That sounds insane. That and sounds insane. I, I've never heard of an NFT project which is with VR. With VR, but not only that, cross-chain interpol, I don't even know how to say the word, cross-chain integrations too. We're going to be integrated with Ethereum, Cardano, Solano, um, uh, Phantom, all of the top networks and exchanges where people own NFTs, they can transfer and do NFT transfers across all of them. We're going to have the ability to do live shows as well on the streaming side, tipping services, you know, if you look at our white paper, because we're branding and building like Playboy as well, right? We're going to have be able to have people get meet and greets with the models, VIP live exclu exclusive trips. We're, we're going to build a taboo mansion for crying out loud. We already have one in place and we have a location in mind. So this is literally becoming the Playboy of blockchain today. That sounds insane. And That sounds insane. So, so you know, you know, that's as far as I want to share on that, but now, yeah. Madrid, Madrid, yeah. talk, talk to me about the roadmap. How, how, what, what are you gonna do in? Let's say, let's say, uh, ten years in the future, where do you see yourself in Taboo? Uh, like, in, in an idea that I had, uh, I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to give you advice, is that uh, what one thing that you, uh, as as I see it, the way I see the project is that you're you're pretty much gonna be the uh, owner of every nightclub or club, or disco club, whatever you want to call it, you're going to be, uh, in my head, is like, you got to show your wallet, and if it owns a certain amount of uh, taboo, uh, they gain entrance, is that correct? It, 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 that's how I see it, maybe yeah. you see it differently. Yeah, that, 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 that's exactly how it is, yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so it, when, when you see the, um, you know, depending on when you connect your wallet, and you see, we, we're able to measure and validate how much taboo they own, that's what's going to determine their tiers, and which, uh, which part of them, uh, the tiering system they're in, in terms of the kinds of content they can access as well, and the benefits of being a higher tier premium holder. So there's utility there from staking on individual profiles, 
which allows people to own and hold more taboo to needing to own and hold more taboo in the first place to unlock these tiers. So we have a lot of major utility coming our way. So yeah, that, that sounds insane. Okay, uh, Majid, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Uh, is it, will it be inside this project? Do you see yourself growing inside this project? Uh, where do you see the crypto industry also in 10 years as well? Right, right. You know, again, this is a brand that I'm focusing on having for the foreseeable future. The goal is to make sure that everybody around the world knows and understands what taboo is and it's at the forefront of their minds. So, you know, that is a surety. You know, it's here to stay. We're a serious project. We're a long-term, viable, and sustainable project. We're here to stay. We're here to win. There's no question about that. So, so I mean, we wouldn't be doing all of this if we weren't, you know? Like, I mean, think about it. We were, we're thinking of even launching a contest at some point, uh, like act, a vacation contest, for crying out loud, for 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 holders too, right? So, and they might even have a chance to meet some of our models too. So this is the things that we're thinking about now in terms of, you know, DeFi and, and, and you know, blockchain as well, right? Um, you know, I believe that DeFi is the beginning of the new finance market structure, right? I mean, it has experienced growing pains like the rest of the industry, but I believe decentralized finance will be the future of money markets. Um, and that's why we've included aspects of DeFi into our marketplace. So it's important for us as a business goal that we contribute to this and provide our users similar opportunities in the DeFi space, right? Um, and I do believe that crypto is about to experience the second wave of the bull market later this year. It's not financial advice. It's my educated opinion because uh, it is the future of finance and creativity. And luckily, we're at the front of the adult industry pushing our crypto as well. Now, now, you know, why is decentralized finance so important is because it takes control and power away from governance. Okay. And you will, you are able to have more control over your finances. I'll give you a very simple example because I love simplicity. If you want to buy a car today, you need to go to a dealership and you need to get a credit check. And then they, and then the dealership, this entity decides whether you are able to buy a car and you can get rejected. See, the point of DEFI is it eliminates the middleman. And by middleman, I mean financial institutions primarily, right? It bypasses financial institutions directly. It brings power back to the consumer. Money is now in the consumer's control. And this is why we're seeing the U.S. and Joe Biden you know, trying to get stricter on cryptocurrency because they know they can only control it by regulation. They can't actually own it and monopolize it. Does that make sense? So, so you know, you know, Bitcoin itself is, 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 I know it's achieving greater acceptance. You look at countries like El Salvador and some of these other, other Latin, uh, and Latin countries as well, you know, they are buying Bitcoin as a store of value. And I believe for the next 10 years, I believe that cryptocurrencies and particularly ones like Bitcoin, will replace gold as the store of value. This might be controversial to some of you, but I believe it. I don't believe that it will replace fiat money. I believe that it will work alongside fiat money and, and replace gold as the number one safe haven currency. If governments are already buying Bitcoin, that is already sharing that truth. Now, why do I feel that cryptocurrency will become the predominant currency, i.e. digital currencies? Another reason. See, I come from the stock market background, right? I help build financial plans on the tax side, on the retirement management side, on corporate business strategies. I did all of that, right? Now, this is the number one thing about that. I, I have a very good knowledge of the stock markets too. We are in such an inflationary market right now with the stock markets that, you know, I mean, inflation has gone up so much even since COVID has started. I try to buy groceries and I'm like, why is this so much more expensive now than it was a year ago, right? We're also in a global credit crisis. This is just the facts. We are in a global credit crisis because governments are continuously printing more and more money and saturating the market with paper currency. We also look at the average investor. 
depending on where you live, it can become very difficult with wages to be able to own a home and be financially more sort of wealthy in the sense of you can develop a strong, a, a nicer and grander lifestyle around that, right? You know, where I live, God forbid, like a property, you know, it's in the seven figures range just to own, right? Debt levels are on the rise as well. I mean, and here in Canada, where I'm from, there's more Canadian debt right now, if you were to compare and adjust for inflation today, than in during World War II today. It is unbelievable. It is a scary time. And I believe that when COVID hit, this is when people started transitioning more of their funds into cryptocurrency because it honestly feels like it's going to become safer than, than the stock markets and fiat money. So, so I believe 10 years from now, digital currencies are going to be the primary form of currency. They're going to work alongside fiat. It'll replace gold as a store of value as well. And, uh, and you know, DeFi's here to stay because of the, the decentralized nature of it all. And to lastly end off, NFTs are definitely here to stay. So thank you. I tend to agree with you. Now, imagine just to wrap things up, I just want to ask you two questions, right? Uh, so the first question is, uh, are you a Bitcoin maximalist or are you an altcoin opportunist? Very good question. Um, I am an altcoin opportunist. Uh, and is there a reason why? Yeah, there is because, you know, for myself, I have personally, if we look at my own personal investments, it's very important to diversify. You never put all your eggs in one basket, right? Uh, because if I'm talking about DeFi and all the opportunities with DeFi, of course, I want to get, you know, a bit of a bit of the piece of the pie, so to speak, on different kinds of cryptocurrencies with different use cases, too. Now, now uh, so I would never recommend anyone to ever go all in on just one project in the first place, even Taboo. Even if I'm telling you I'm fully confident it's a good idea, I would never say you should do it. Does that make sense? I so, agree with you. So, um, so yeah, I, I'm an altcoin opportunist because my risk tolerance is so high. That's really excellent. What it comes excellent. Down to. My second question is, uh, where do you see Bitcoin going at the end of the year? Where do you see the price? Mm. Mm. I think we have a chance and an opportunity to break 100k by the end of the year. I don't think it'll go more than that. I think there's an opportunity that we could hit 80 to 100k. So. When you look at Bitcoin maximalists, well, you know, the idea usually is you take your altcoin profits and you move it into stable currencies or larger cap plays like Bitcoin. So, you know, so again, you know, a two times gain for me doesn't really excite me by the end of the year. A 10 to 100 to 1,000 time gain, 1,000 times gain does. But of course, because we're in this unique position in cryptocurrency where it's not it's not fully adopted yet around the world, but it's somewhat adopted and there's speculations around regulation and what governments are going to do and yada, yada, yada. You know, that's why when you invest in crypto, you need to always remember, don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Just imagine whatever you invest, it's already gone in your mind. Then that will leave emotions out of it. You have to trick your mind. This is coming from someone who has doesn't even have a risk tolerance. This is what you have to do. And this is what will help you Stay emotionless towards your investments. Make smarter, more logical decisions around your investments as well. And be less likely to buy high and sell low to keep it. Short. I agree with you. So. I agree with you, Magic. Magic, just to write things yeah. up, where, do you, where can people find you? Where, do you have a Twitter? Do you have an Instagram? Do you have a Telegram? Or uh, just all go ahead. We have all of that as well. So I don't know if you mentioned any information on the description of this uh, podcast. Uh, I'm definitely I'm definitely going to write in, in the description. But if you want to go ahead and, and just tell people how they can yeah. contact you. Yeah, yeah. So so I mean the the website you can start with it's taboo t a b o o dot community. When you go on there and the very right at the beginning and the very first few pay, uh, first few landing pages there, you can see all the icons for all of our socials. Telegram is a good one to click on first. Then you can get to talk to any of our admins and mods, get a feel for how the community environment and energy is as well. Uh, you, so you can do that as well. And um, make sure to read our white paper from the website. Very important. Um, that is the detailed, you know, educational aspect of our documents that, that, that smart investors will read uh, before making a, a decision to invest. Um, and, uh, and our Twitter, make sure to follow our Twitter because, you know, it's growing rapidly. We're nearly at 10,000 holders and nearly at 10,000 Twitter followers. So we have a very good ratio going on 
from holders and Twitter followers, but you that's where you'll get up to date with all of our latest and current news. So thank you very much, Majid. Majid, uh, take care, man. Thank you very much for coming in uh, into Bitcoin Bar and of course uh, sparing your time here. Uh, guys, I just want to give a round of applause to Majid. Uh, you're doing a fantastic job, my friend. And, and uh, hopefully in the future, we can do more podcasts. Uh, maybe when you're down the line at a half a billion, uh, we can do another project. <laughs> we can do another podcast, uh, how well you did it. All right, Majid. Take care, buddy. Thank Sounds you very great. much. Thank you so much. Take care, guys. Thank you.